There were more policemen and soldiers than people on the streets of Riyadh today, and not a demonstrator in sight. 30,000 had signed up to the Facebook page supporting the so-called Day of Rage to call for reform in the country. But the intimidation and the threats kept them away. It's about now that thousands of protesters were meant to meet in this square in central Riyadh. It's hardly surprising that no one's turned up. Over the last few days, the papers have been filled with reminders of the penalties for demonstrating in this country, lashings and imprisonment. Ministry of Information Minders drove us into town to film the no-show. <laughs> Report what you see, said the policeman in charge. They were not expecting a 40-year-old teacher called Khaled to burst onto the scene. Why, why do you feel you need to demonstrate? Yes, because I need freedom. I need democracy. The, 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 the royal family don't own us. They are, don't own us. I have a right to speak. If you speak, they will put you in jail after five minutes. They will put you in jail after five minutes if you speak, if you see anything. You're not scared? I'm not scared. Everybody here wants to be in jail because all country is a big jail. What do you think will happen to you now you've spoken of? I will go in the jail with a big smile. Because I feel already in the, in the jail. When you don't have a right to speak, you are in the jail. He told us in Arabic that what Saudi Arabia needs is a parliament and a constitution. The minders looked increasingly nervous. We were told we had to go, but I wanted to accompany him back to his car and take his phone number. Not that it helped much. He was followed by a police car, and when we phoned him at home tonight... There was no answer. The Saudi government claimed people have no need to demonstrate because they have a method of government that works. The king meets with advisors and tribal leaders to decide laws and distribute money. He's been called a reformer, but so far, national elections have proved a step too far. The Saudi way is replicated at the local level by community leaders who meet regularly and receive petitions from people requesting, say, a car, a house or a job. This tribal leader explains that they read every petition with care and because they know every family, they can judge their needs. But don't people want more, which is why they're demonstrating? Quran and Sunnah do not permit such things. <laughs> Our faith is according to uh, Allah, and then we have to obey our governors, the whole, uh, since they are our rulers, we have to obey, uh, to obey them and follow their orders. I have spoken to people in the kingdom who say, enough, we are a grown-up people now, we are entitled to representation. We are entitled to some form of democracy. The ruler's door is open for everybody. Whether he's a Saudi or an un-Saudi, he can come and present his case. And instead of going to the streets and make all this corruption, why don't you go straight ahead? Straight to the head, to the man in charge, and submit your case. We drove across the desert to the east, home to the Shia minority, where there have already been demonstrations. We deliberately timed our journey to arrive at night because journalists are not allowed here. Last night in Khatif in eastern Saudi Arabia, police opened fire on demonstrators who were calling for the release of political prisoners. They unfurled the Saudi flag to show their loyalty to the crown, but they say no one has answered their petitions. We are going to meet the family of a man who has been in prison for 14 years without charges or a trial. Locals warned us to be careful. And you said you could come and see you. This is a story that the authorities don't want to be told. The family is one of many who say their men are in jail, allegedly for terrorist offences, but they've never been brought to court. Hey. 
Is it right that a man should miss the weddings of his daughters and the funerals of his parents? We do not know why he's being held and when he will be let go. I am Saudi citizen. I can't tell him, please, King Abdullah, people are very angry. Please don't risk the future of the country. Please, King Abdullah, we cannot stay forever like this. We are very angry, we are very nervous, and the situation is very tension. We set off for our next destination. All these things you done today, you talked with the Shia prisoners, family, we cannot do it in our newspapers. Never, never happened in the history of Saudi Arabia in the newspapers. But we were being watched, and after we'd finished filming, we were arrested, some of our tapes were taken, and we were ordered out of the area. Back in Riyadh, a group of human rights activists set up a political party a few weeks ago. They were all arrested. In his apartment above a busy shopping street, Mohammed al Qatani is one of the few spokesmen for the opposition not in jail. He says there are 30,000 political prisoners in the country. The government put it at about a third that number. What do the opposition want? This government is a police state masquerading as a theocracy. And we, not, we need it to be reformed entirely. We need uh, freedom of press. We need... Uh, uh, you know, freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, we need check and balances of the government. Um, we need um, a written constitution uh, that uh, highlights the rights of the people, the rights of the ru rulers, uh, and also um, uh, separation of powers and so on and so forth. These fundamentals, um, you know, of the functional government that you see around the world. Have you been helped by events elsewhere in the region? Well, most definitely. Just a few months ago, we are really losing hope but now I think we see the light at the end of the tunnel, and we are enthusiastic that uh, we could accomplish something in the near future. But any opposition here will have to challenge the strictest form of Islamic rule, which compares political dissent with heresy. Half the population of Saudi Arabia live on the coast. Cities like Jeddah are deemed more relaxed than the interior though the strict dress code still applies everywhere. 70% of the population here are under 30, and youth unemployment compares with Egypt and Tunisia. But if the Saudi revolution is expected to start among the young, there was little sign of it here among the 20-something-year-olds who are prepared to talk. I don't think it'll happen here. Unlike neighboring countries, the king provides us with all we need. The young people here love their country. We've all benefited from the king's generosity, and we should all support him now. People here know nothing but rule by the House of Saud, which has guaranteed stability and absolutism for 80 years. When the 87-year-old monarch returned from treatment abroad two weeks ago, there were celebrations and a national holiday. We're all one, the king, the country, and the people. When the king came back, he issued billions of rails for the poor. People are comfortable. That's why they won't rebel. And there is poverty in this oil-rich country. I accompanied a social worker into the poorer areas of Jeddah. The king gave £22 billion in extra welfare benefits to buy people's continuing loyalty, say his critics, while autocracy is being challenged elsewhere in the region. It hasn't benefited women like Zakia, whose husband is out of work, there's a hole in the roof, and she has to beg for baby milk and nappies. Would these women join a protest? They can't fight all the poverty, the ignorance and the unemployment, but the government is doing the best they can. Clearly, the government can count on the entrenched conservatism in the majority of Saudis. Only in the relative privacy of a bookshop you find people who are prepared to complain, like this teacher and journalist who's had articles about government corruption refused by her paper, and, as she points out, the censorship spreads to the Internet. The agreement of Sidao in Arabic, I couldn't get into, into that website. It's uh, part of the Human Rights Watch uh, website. 
that's exactly what you get when you try to look for the information. The requested page is unavailable. But to go further, people ask to remain anonymous. Our demands have gone way beyond financial needs. We now have social and political demands. We want people's participation in government, an elected parliament, and accountability. The movement for change has begun in Saudi Arabia. The question now is how much longer the kingdom can remain an island of stability and conservatism while surrounded by so much turbulence.